Good afternoon, this is Beebs, and this is Open Mic. It's not the morning that gets me It's out it won't shine through It's not the daylight that kills me It's this distance between me and you Half of me wants to tell you Not to give up on me Half of me wants to sell you Things that can never be But don't give me another chance Cause if you do, if you do, I'll just wreck myself again If you do, if you do, I'll just wreck myself again And it's a struggle between the two That has me thinking It's a struggle between the two That has me drinking To you It's not the phone that gets me It's out it won't ring through It's not the hum kills me It's this line not connecting to you I want to feel like something It's not entirely tired I want to feel like someone Not entirely sad But don't give me another chance Don't give me another chance Cause if you do, if you do I'll just wreck myself again If you do, if you do I'll just wreck myself again if you do, if you do, I just wreck myself again. If you do, if you do, I just wreck myself all over again. Mr. Joel Corda. Yes, sir. That, that sounded beautiful. Thank you, my man. Uh, tell me, uh, where'd you come up with that one? Oh, this is slightly embarrassing. Mm hmm. Uh, a friend of mine got married, and uh, it was one of those ones where you saw people you hadn't seen in years, mm -hmm. and bad decisions were made. And uh, just, you know, you, those nights when you do stuff that just hurts you, yep. and the next day when I woke up, I said, I, I, I wrecked myself again. And uh, it took me like three days to put myself back together again. And we've all been there. We've all, so it's we've a, all been there. It's one of those songs everybody can identify with. <laughs> yes. And you're uh, doing that song on a new album that you're kind of working on? Absolutely. New album, uh, seven recorded. That one, uh, there's an older version, but I'm going to re record it with, uh, we're going to add violin to that song. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be great. Maybe, maybe accordion, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> uh, what other kind of songs? We're going to play one other one off of that track. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to say it's more singer-songwriter vein. Uh, I'm extremely lucky because the people that I'm playing with are such good musicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just take what I'm doing and amplify it and make it that much better. And these are people from Great Falls, Montana. Absolutely. Uh, one one person I've known, I've played in... All sort, he's on the other ones that you're probably going to play. Dusty mm -hmm. Peterson, he's been playing guitar with me for years. His brother's part of the uh, Cold Hard Cash. He's 
the Johnny Cash man. Mm -hmm. uh, Dusty actually getting married this weekend. I heard that. To the bass player. Yes. Nikki, Nikki Hersog. And she's quite talented she's also. She's awesome. She's a great bass player. In and fact, she's going to be a backup singer in the Wyoming song that absolutely. we're going to play. Yes, she's a great singer. On uh, Those two do a, a duo act that's really pretty incredible. Uh, Lindsey Nussbaum plays with us too. He plays didgeridoo. Didgeridoo. And a little accordion. Uh, Steve Olson, the musical mastermind, playing mm -hmm. piano and fiddle. Violin. I don't know if he likes me calling it fiddle. Yeah. Sounds like a fiddle on that. And Matt Johnson rounding it out, playing drums with us while we're recording. So so all pretty much local people? All local people. And and uh, Belt is in one of them, uh, Steve from Belt? He or is from Belt. Yeah, yeah. He, he went to high school out in Belt. Yeah. Yeah. So, But so he's uh, teaching at CMR with me. He's the orchestra instructor there. So. And, uh, you know, teaching, uh, how, how much time do you have to put together an album? Well, uh, summers help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've realized that mostly what's happening is I'm doing a, my cycle has been during the school year, write, write a ton, play it, play it, play it out. And then in the summer, just get that stuff out. Right. Uh, hoping what we do is we record it, get it out, and then tour next summer. That'd be sweet. That'd be great. And you're trying to get the album out, of course, for the holidays. Absolutely. The next couple months we want it done. Yeah. I mean, that's when people seem to buy music. You bet. Yeah, so... No, it sounds good. And we've uh, we met during uh, we're going to do a song, Long Gone, which yes. you know is kind of probably my favorite of yours. Oops. And uh, it's uh, it's a good one, and it's from the movie Iron Ridge, which I was in. Yes, you and were. And how, how, who approached you about that, Stu? That is Rory. It's funny that I don't remember. I kind of met. I, I Rory was a student of mine, and and Stu I met. And I think I gave him the album just to, you know, because we were comparing art, you know. Right, right. We were talking movies, talking music, and I just gave him mine, and he asked if he could use it. I said, absolutely. Did you want mine tonight? We'll find it in the morning. Roll over in your bed. Just tapping you on the shoulder. I'm long gone Just can't cast those doubts away And I'm long gone Gonna find those chances I didn't take You should've taken it slow Taking it easy, we laid all the cards down. Now there's nowhere else to go. But long gone, just can't cast all doubts away.
Because when I heard when song. I heard that we were using a local guy, I was like, oh man, you know, <laughs> you, you roll your eyes and stuff. And then, uh, it, and it's not the credit; it's the, the introduction song, pretty much of you know rolling the yeah. the people's names. And man, it just fit perfect. I Thank thought. you. Good. And then uh, the landlord song is yes. another one of my favorites. So tell me a little bit about that. I wrote <laughs> okay, the landlord. I wrote while I was living in a trailer park in Moscow, Idaho. Uh huh. And uh, it. it I'm probably telling too much, but... Were you the king of the trailer park? I was not the king of the trailer park. <laughs> I, uh, I remember there was a time when, uh, in the middle of the night, there was a knock on my door, and it was the previous tenant, whose face I'd seen on wanted signs, right. asking to get something out of the bricks. Hey, man, I need to get something out of the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I didn't either, but it was... I, 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 he, there, were, there was a stack of bricks inside, oh, my, oh, oh, oh. inside the trailer. I just said, you know what, I'm going to go back here. You get what you need and go ahead and go. <laughs> Just don't let me know. I don't want to know. Yeah. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't want to report you to the sheriff, which I actually did call the sheriff the <laughs> next day. But no, what had happened with that particular song was um, Charles Bukowski, a writer and poet, had died. And he was an old man. And a month later, or within that same month, Kurt Cobain died. Oh, wow. And it was kind of my response to how I felt about those two things. You know, one of those, uh, it sounds... This is why you don't talk. This is why you don't talk about music sometimes. But uh, it was it, I was angry. I was mad about how these things had happened and how people that we all cared about right. came to their ends. Right. You know, one was an old man and died, you know, naturally, and the other one not so much. And there's a line in there where I say, "Oh well, whatever, never mind." It's from their hit song. It's from "Smells Like Teen Spirit," but I used it for my, I repurposed it for my own purposes. Some rocker off himself today. Oh well, whatever. Never mind. But hey, landlord, don't you think it's a little more respectable to live, suffer, then die? Well, I know I don't always do everything right, and I know I keep the trailer park up at night. But let's put that all aside right now, cause it's something. I've got to know. Hey, landlord, how come you always come around whenever I haven't paid my token? And hey, landlord, how come you never come around when you know that something is broken? Well, I know I don't do everything right, and I know I keep the trailer Let's put that all aside right now Cause there's something I've got to know your name it's amazing um, when a pop culture especially a singer passes away you know Elvis uh, Jim Croce I, I know yeah. where I was when I got the news I mean yeah. it, it just never quite leaves you so. no not at all and let's talk a little bit about your past your uh theatrically trained is that what you would say more than operatic well it, yes I, I was doing both growing up here in Great Falls I sang and I was in a lot of plays and the, the first thing that I did was I went to uh, Idaho to sing I got University opera, of Idaho University of Idaho met my wife there on the first opera she's she, a babe she's <laughs> yes she is yeah. she is a babe she uh, she did my makeup on my first opera and we've been together ever since wow yeah and uh, from that, I had been in some plays. It was Fiddler on the Roof, actually, and I got nominated for a national award. And I, I was 
I, I was in the finals. Hmm. So they offered me an MFA, so I stuck around and got a theater performance master of fine arts. And then we went and traveled and did the traveling show where you, you know, we do theater. We did it in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, some in Washington. Uh, so the Northwest. Northern, all over, yeah, all over the Northwest. And then decided, you know, we don't want to be part of the traveling circus. Right. We Give wanna... me a little uh, If I Were a Rich one. <laughs> Can you do that real quick? I probably could, yes. Yeah, do you, yeah. you, you know how you're worried about the mics yeah, blowing up? I know, up the... I know. We, we... If I were a rich man, da ba dee ba da ba dee ba da ba dee ba da ba dum. I, you know, I, <laughs> I, I would love to see it. Have you ever thought about kind of reprising the yes the role and doing I, it either locally or again to the Northwest? Or absolutely, whatever? it's it's one of those ones that stuck with me. It's it was the one that made made a name for me. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. We started a new theater, you know that. We started yeah. a theater company with uh, Miss Linda Fuller, and we just did Sound of Music this summer. So we're always looking at the next one, you know, what we're going to do next. I know that we're doing Music Man next, but down the road, when I need to get back on stage again, I think that's... Fiddler on the Roof would be cool. Oh, it's... And, you know, you it's got no shortage of guys with beards. Right. You know, in, in Montana, <laughs> so do it during the hunting season. Um, and you're really active in church. Yes. Um, all the way from growing up? All the way growing You know, it's it's interesting. I am right now, it's been 10 years. I've been the cantor and co-music director at St. Anne's Cathedral. And my mom had that job oh, in really? the late 70s and the 80s. I grew up there. So is your family musical? My mother, absolutely. Oh. Um, she tells me I had uh, an uncle that was very musical mm -hmm. that I never got to meet. The family, and it was back when you your, your entertainment was around family. a piano. Right. Around a piano playing and singing. and So, yeah. That side was definitely musical. So I didn't mean to cut you off about the church. You're not cutting me off. Yeah. Cantor. <laughs> but it, I thought a cantor was more of singing without music. Is that a cantor? Cantor just leads the music. Just leads the for music. For the congregation there, yeah. And there are Saturdays, Saturday nights and Sunday mornings every weekend. And then uh, you have no shortage of funeral and There are funerals and weddings, and, weddings yeah. and uh, any, other, any, <laughs> any other activities that are out there. I'll do. Yeah, how many do you think funerals do you do a year? One a month? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's about the average. And what about weddings? Weddings a little less. A little uh, less. Yeah, well, because it's a season, and then sometimes you're not around for those when you're in the summer. So. And then um, high school, um, you went to Great Falls High. Went to Great Falls High, graduated, and uh, did a lot of theater there. Did a lot, of, actually, a lot of choir, a lot of band, a lot of the same things I'm doing right now. So it was a great. Um, it's a great place experience. to be from. You know, it's it's interesting, and, and it's if, since we're talking about songwriting, the first band that I was ever in, I was the drummer for Reggie Watts. Oh, really? Yeah, we he uh, we formed a, <laughs> and they were older. These guys, these guys were older than me. I was a I started as a freshman, and they were juniors and, and seniors, and uh, I was the drummer, and I was a jock and a, a little choir boy, and these these guys needed a drummer, and they were so. Uh, open-hearted and good to include me. And, and what was great about growing up that way, we wrote our own songs. I didn't know any other way. We didn't start being a cover band. We wrote our songs first, and then we played songs we liked. It was really interesting because a lot of times you hear, oh, you got to go you got to go be a bar band. You have to go do this and that before right. you can even. We were creating from the start. I'm fairly convinced that if Reggie had YouTube at that time, he would have been famous 20 years ago now for those that don't know reggie watts tell them a little he's, bit about him he's an internationally known comic and uh Im improv improvisational expert i guess i would call him uh, but mostly known for comedy and music but he uh just a really unique comedy you have to kind of see to believe yeah and no but it's all stream of consciousness he doesn't write anything down. and you were kind of telling me that the act he's doing now you've seen it <laughs> since high school we, yes <laughs> We saw that act on the drama bus, you know, on the way to Billings when they, you know, would win state championships. He's always been that. He's been that incredibly creative, which was great to be around. Right. So I just thought you, you create. That's what you do. I never had a moment of, oh, well, you got to do this, 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 and this. Right. I was around people that were just making things. That's cool. It was great. Following in no one else's footsteps. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And if you watch him now, he's doing the same thing. Yeah, for people that don't know, he did the Budweiser commercial for the Super Bowl. Yeah, he's And he's he was in big. the li limousine with an afro about 
Yes. The size that and hit, hit the top of the roof. He's been working on that. Yeah. Um, he, the other interesting thing about Reggie, and I, to, to plug him a little bit, he has come back to Great Falls numerous times, mm-hmm. all for charity. He did a show in Missoula for a friend of ours that had, an acting friend that had died this last year. He doesn't need to do that. Right. This guy's filling, you know, major theaters and arenas. He doesn't need to come to Great Falls. He just does. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your influences. I know you're an Isbell fan. I'm definitely a Jason Isbell f- fan. Uh, the singer-songwriters. You know, uh, I think of the AM radio in the 70s. Mm-hmm. You know, those old country songs, those old rock songs. Mm-hmm. Hank Williams, Johnny Cash, uh, Jim Croce we were talking about, Simon and Garfunkel. Right. Um, a little more words and not shaking yes. your booty so much. Yeah, you know, and I probably need a little more shaking, shaking my booty in my <laughs> life. But, uh, yeah. you know, Springsteen is my all-time favorite. Um, again, singer songwriter. He seems to have the shaking your booty part down pretty well, though. We'll get there. We'll who, get there. Who shake? Who are you talking about? Springsteen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 He gets. He gets. He gets the the magic going. Well, I don't think he has <laughs> to shake it much. No, he doesn't yeah. have to work that hard yeah. anymore. No. Uh, Cowboy junkies, old ninety sevens, all these. You know, now it's those singer songwriters. It's the Jason Isbells, the um, Ryan Adams, all those guys that are just. If you can write a song and sing it pretty, then why not? I'm there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, the two of us got to go see Esbell at the Top Hat <laughs> Lounge in Missoula. Maybe the and, best concert and that, ever. That was unbelievable. So if you ever get a chance, I mean, I'm not <laughs> plugging Missoula or the Top Hat or anything, but great venue. Yes. Well, how many people? Maybe 500. If if yeah. if that you know. And uh, to see a guy like that, and then I got to see him at Red Ant's Pants. Which one did you think was better? Oh, well, the top hat was definitely a, lo- a little more intimate, right. but um, b- both are unique. Yep. You know, when you're sitting out under the stars at 11 o'clock on a yeah. summer night, it's kind of hard to beat that, too. So, <laughs> yeah. I agree. So, anything else? Tell me, you know, just plug yourself a little bit. Plug myself. Uh, album coming out. We, uh, in the meantime of writing this this music, we were also, I wrote a film last year. Mm-hmm. We're about 70% done with the shooting of that. So, a lot of these songs you can hear in the movies. Good. And, uh, you know, I'm just on the cycle of writing. I'm halfway through writing the next movie. I'm on page 50 of a play that I'm working on. And uh, maybe working on a TV show with a buddy of mine with a big beard. And uh... <laughs> Yeah. And so, if you, you know, the thing about it, if you're creative and as long as you're creating, you know, you got a chance to succeed. Absolutely. You know, if, if you're not creating... Uh, it's it's tough, especially if you're creative. Exactly. You know, it's interesting too. You say successful. I, the fact that we're doing things, right? I feel is successful. Right. The fact that I'm not bottling it up and waiting for somebody else to tell me what to do or how to do it. Yeah. We're out there getting it done, and it's it's been wonderful. You're a talented man, Thank and you, I'm man. glad to call you my friend. Thank you. Beast. And we're on the wor- world wide web. That's now. exciting. So you know, spread the word. I that, will spread uh, the word. KGPR, Great Falls. I think it's KGB, P, KGPR, public or PR, something like that. Okay. But uh, you can find out on Facebook. On so. the book face. Okay. Because you've got you know relatives in Boise. Yes. We've Boise. got friends all over. We've got all friends over. in LA. You bet. We've got Jonah on a mountaintop in uh, <laughs> Hamilton, but you know, <laughs> she's not going to get a radio. Right. She won't. No. No. Oh, okay. There's no signal. So. <laughs> All right, dude. It's uh, good talking to you. And Thank you. Just tell me what's next for you. What's next? Finish the album. Finish the movie. Been working with uh, freshman choirs at CMR. We have a concert on October 13th. And uh, I bet they get a kick out of you, don't they? I'd like to think so, but, yeah. you know, I might Have be... you had to pile drive any of them? No. Well, you know, we're not allowed. Yeah, That'll yeah, you... yeah, I know. You'll... That'll get you kicked you'll, out of the NFL. On... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. It's a, it's a different world than when we grew up. You bet. Yeah. You bet. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Thank this you, is uh, Open Mic Beebs with Joe Acorda, KGPR Great Falls, and have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. You treat me all right at the landing If I sing on chain i
go down It's just me alone with that big white sky And when the lights go down It's just me alone with question Why, why am I in wild? Why, why am I not there with you? Why, why did I come here anyway? Why, why can I stop missing you? Just for a minute I guess I don't play well with others If you're not on my team well, If I had my way well, I'd slip this dream Cause without you nothing is that pretty here And I count every hour So just come down here and haunt me just come down And when the lights go down It's just me alone With that big white sky And when the lights go down It's just me alone With a question Just for a minute. So what's the moral of the story? What's the lesson of the day? Man can live within himself For he can give his love away Maybe that's why I choose you Maybe that's why you'll stay Let us never be this far apart Let us never have to That when the lights go down, it's just me alone in a big white sky. That when the lights go down, it's just me alone. My name is Biebs, inviting you to join us at 1.30 for Open Mic, our weekly program featuring local and not-so-local artists. If you would like to be a guest on Open Mic, send us an email at kgpr at gfcmsu.edu, or you may call us at 268-3739. Thank you for listening and supporting Montana Public Radio, 89.9 FM, KGPR, Great Falls.